Fred Bronson. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Ola. I really wanted See, we that agreed she could have this side, and I was going to take that side, but... Germans. Sorry. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, well, hi, Lorene. How are you? I'm fine. Good. I'm fine. I'm Me too. sitting pretty Me too. nice here on this side. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish we had. I know. Well, let's start. I, I know this says that we're going to talk about the future, but I want to start with a little bit about the past. Uh, so tell me, there, there's only a few people in the world who are able to go somewhere and represent their country. Uh, and I'm thinking, you know, if you're an Olympic athlete or you're in the World Cup or you're a tennis player playing at Wimbledon, you get to do that. But you got to be one of the very few people who could go somewhere else and represent your country. What was that like for you at Eurovision? Oh, wow. I, it was nice. It was, it was special. I'm not a uh, patriot like that. I, I think I represented uh, everybody that loves music, I guess, and that believes in something different, because what I did was a bit different. Um, so, but, but it was, it was Nice and interesting. <laughs> okay, now, a lot of people think that your vision is just one night. You go, you know, you go on the air at... Uh, okay, that too. If we screw these up, they'll bring us hand mics. <laughs> that, yeah. I like hand mics okay. better, though. We can, we can like screw that? it up on purpose, yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, people think it's just something that goes on the air at 9 o'clock, and it's over at midnight, and that's it. But actually, it's two weeks of rehearsals and press conferences and parties and mm. working with people from other countries. Mm, mm. What was your experience of being there for those couple of weeks or however long you were there? What was that like for you? It was, it was very, very intense. It's, it's a lot of work, especially, as I said before, when you do something that different, you know, I had, I had this platform and it, it was a certain size and it was, it was a one, about one meter high so you could fall and there was, basically no lights, so you couldn't see the, the edges. So uh, I had to focus, so there was no partying for me whatsoever. I think, uh, no, no party at all, actually. You were working, yeah. <laughs> I was working, yeah. yeah. But it was a tight, tight schedule. Uh, it, it demanded a lot of focus. Um, and I did that. <laughs> were you able to interact with people from other countries? Was that part I, of the experience? I, yeah, I, I met some, of course, because but there was a lot of artists there. There was a lot of artists. So, uh, but I met the Russian ladies. They were really interesting. The grandmas. The grandmas. Right, yeah. They were. They were really your biggest threat, as it turned out. They came in second. Yeah, but they were so. They, they were so. They were elder, of course. They were right, old. Right. They had so much knowledge. You realize that when you sit, and 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 you talk to them, even though they don't didn't know English, but right. they, they had a, no, but they had a translator, and. Uh, we had some really nice, interesting discussions. Really, so they were they were they were there because of their church. They were, they wanted to build a church in their really? little village, and that was why they oh. did this to raise money for it. And they were uh, actually quite. I mean, it was a bit of a novelty, but they were actually quite good. You know, it yeah. wasn't just a laugh. It was no, and uh, I, I hope people didn't laugh at them. I don't think just so. Not when no, they were performing. No. They want people. Over. Yeah. yeah. Because to them, music is like it's joy and happiness, and they, and they shared it with us. Uh, so I don't think people laughed at them, or just mm -hmm. together with them. Now, you had already been in a television competition before you went to Eurovision mm -hmm. with Idol in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any, when you thought about doing Eurovision, did you have any thoughts that, well, I've already done a television competition? Or were you, were you thinking, I want to do this again? Oh, the idols! That was that was completely different from 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 the Eurovision. To be honest, the idols I needed, I needed to be in that, in that show because it was during that show I learned a lot about myself, a lot about what I wanted to do and how the industry worked, and it was actually after the idols, where my my actual work started, where where I I I realized that I need to learn my craft, need to handle it, and I, and I need to stand for what is, what is me, basically. And it's going to take time, really. And it took seven years. So, 
Yeah. That's funny because that's how I describe American Idol. It's like a university where you learn about yourself and mm -hmm. the industry, and Indeed. that's exactly what you, what you just said. Indeed. Uh, so when they entered Eurovision back in 1974, mm. Benny and Bjorn said they were the only reason they were doing it mm -hmm. was to break out beyond the borders of Sweden. Mm. You have broken out beyond mm. the borders of Sweden. So tell me about that experience of going to other countries and having your, 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 your euphoria has been number one in many mm. countries. I yeah. was looking this morning at yeah. where it's charted and I've had at least eight countries where it was number one. Maybe there's more. <laughs> but so tell me about breaking out beyond the borders of Sweden. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, there are times I feel so I have I have the Swedish culture in me, and then I have the Moroccan culture. I have so many so many cultures in me. I'm one big mess. <laughs> 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 which which but but it makes it a lot easier when you come abroad, when you're in Germany or when you're in Spain, because you know these different languages, and it's it's. Uh, and of course, they, they, they handle things differently in the music industry in Spain or in the UK. Uh, but I like it. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's good. Do you find audiences different in these different countries, or do they react all the same? No, not really. I mean, we here in Scandinavia, we're very um, reserved. But we're still listening, and we're very open when we listen. And but but in Spain, I would say, for an example, there's a lot more temper, you know, there's a lot more movements. Um, but still, we're all people, we're all the same, you know. We we have to show emotions the way we want to show emotions. It's, it's integrity, I guess, right? So how soon after your vision did you start working on your album? Ooh. Actually, a lot of songs, they were already finished last year. Uh -huh. So I, uh, but you know, it's, it's you, you develop and you learn things you want to write about it, you know. So uh, I wrote some new songs after it and I've been working very, very intensely with the album. <laughs> Actually, when I'm not performing, I'm in the studio. So how much would you say, what percent of the time are you on the road and what percent of the time are you in the studio? Oh, right now, I would say 50-50. Mm, yeah. And what what uh, what are we can we expect from the album? Are we going to get twelve euphorias, or are we going to get <laughs> uh, lots of different elements? What's twelve euphorias? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, actually, it's a very it's a very dramatic, emotional album. It's 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 actually a mix. I've tried to mix. Actually, I have mixed two worlds: the organic world, where everything is very. You use organic instruments, you play them live, and the electronic world, you know, dance music, still is very hard. So I've, I've mixed these two worlds. Some songs have just a simple guitar, and I tweaked it a bit with some vocoder effects. For you. I don't know if you guys know, but that's an effect. Um, so no, I've tried to mix these two worlds. Uh, I've, tried to, I've, I've written about my stories, and. The album is actually called Heal. Heal. Because, yeah, it's because you, you, know, you cleansed your system, you wrote about life stories, and right. you've taken them out, and then you're healed, right? And I've never heard of an album called Heal before, so you have a unique title, too. Great, right? great. Yeah. Great. Is there a song called Heal? Yeah. 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 Uh, tell me about your songwriting. Uh, after Euphoria became such a big hit, mm that you say, you know, you wrote a lot of songs after your vision. Mm. So how did your songwriting change after having such a big hit, or did it? Mm, not that much. I try to be as, 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 as honest as I can be so that people can relate to it. Um, and it's a process, I guess, you know, you write a bit and then you, you leave it and go back to it and see if you're actually telling the, the whole story. <laughs> If you're hiding things, and so no, it hasn't changed that much. We all have different ways of writing, and yeah, I have mine. Who who would you say are your you know? Before you, we had Paul Simon here, and he was talking about some of his childhood influences, which mm. was doo-wop from the mm. streets of New York. Mm. What what were some of your childhood influences, and how do they do? Any of them play out in the album that's coming out? Yeah. I, um, Enya, I liked her very much, um, 
because uh, my my mother she had a LP. Is it called LP? Yes. Yeah. Vinyl. Vinyl. From the old days. This. Yes. I, I have mine too. Yes. <laughs> a vinyl. Um, but yeah, that that was a huge inspiration. And then there was uh, Bjork, actually. Yeah. A prior Polar Prize. Yeah, winner, Bjork, exactly. Yes. yes. Because she's very, very emotional in her way of singing. It's, it's honest, you know, when, when you dare to, to scream out that way, you know, just open up and, and to soften it. it it's, it's very um, naked, can you say that? Yeah. No, so Bjork, and I used to listen very much to, to Eric Satie. Yeah. Because at that time, when I was a child, we only had three, three channels. Uh, one's called... SVT. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of it, when all the shows were over, they had this, you know, this picture where they only play music before right. the channel is totally off. And there they used to play Eric Satie. And that was how I learned to play the piano. Really? <laughs> yes. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Wait, when did you first know that you were musical? It's one thing to listen to music, but it's another mm. thing to know that you could actually make music. I think it was when somebody else noticed it and told you that, you know, you know, you're very good because music to me at that time was a sanctuary. I did it and I, it was mine. I didn't want to share with anybody else at that time. I didn't think like that. Um, so it wasn't until I think my mother told me that she, you, you're really good, you know, please sing for me. <laughs> I didn't though. <laughs> and up to that time, you didn't. <laughs> Too shy. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, though. <laughs> no. uh, and up to that time, had you thought about another career? Had you thought about, you know, that you no. might go into, you know, taking care of animals or teaching or psychology? When did, what was on your mind before you decided that you would be a recording artist? Oh, wow. I've been everywhere. Uh, but I, I loved biology and physics very much. So one time I was thinking about becoming a doctor. <laughs> yeah. So, no, actually, I've been everywhere. I wanted to be a doctor at one time, and then I wanted to be a lawyer, and then I wanted to be, you know, but still, at one point, you realize that you always go back to music, you always go back to, and, and you realize also that this is actually where I'm happy. I'm reading all these, the, these things, biology and physics, and they're interesting, but it doesn't really give me the same satisfaction as sitting in front of a piano, and why not choose something that really makes you happy? Absolutely. I think we're lucky if we can follow a career that, you know, is something we really, is from our heart that mm. we really want to do. I feel lucky in that way, and I'm sure you do too. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. Um, were your parents supportive in terms of you being a recording artist, or did they say, well, have a backup plan, or were they... Mm -mm, never. My, my mother, she, she's, she's really an inspiration because she's lived a really hard life, and she, she believed in something that, that was basically impossible, you know, coming from Africa. I'm not supposed to give her a story, but to tell a story, but coming from Africa where there were poverty and she wanted a different life. And she, she fought for it and she, and she managed. And that was why she taught me, like, no matter if you have a dream, as long as you know that it takes hard work, you'll get there and you have to, you have to believe in it, but hard work. Yeah. And here you are. And here I am. So with the album about to come out, do we have a release date for the album? October. I think it's the first week in October. And it's on Warner? It's Warner. on Warner, yeah. Okay. And today, what state is the album in right now? Is it finished? Is it being worked on as we speak? What's happening? Yeah, it's being worked on as we speak. We recorded, uh, uh, we recorded strings just this Friday. That, that was next, uh, well, about the week before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a work, but it's it's uh, we're 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 finishing it up, basically. Yeah. And do we know what the new single will be? You guys, want an honest answer on that one too? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. <laughs> it stands between two songs. Okay. Yeah. And one is called "Crying Out Your Name." Isn't that dramatic? Uh, or my heart is refusing me. That has already been released oh, yeah. here, but sure. it's a completely different production. Oh. Yeah, and it's going to be released all over 
Right, because this isn't just for Sweden anymore. This no. is for the world the now. The world, yeah. Well, I hope you get to the U.S. because I think Euphoria would be a huge hit in America. We just don't know what the Eurovision Song Contest is, but we don't need to. We just need a great song. Oh, so thank you. We'll have, to, we'll have to get Warner Sweden to talk to Warner America and uh, yeah, they have, to. have it come out in America because I'm sure Euphoria would be an American hit too. Thank you. Thanks. So I have no idea where... Ola, how are we in time? We have time for uh, some more questions from you or from the audience, as you see fit. Okay, good. Should we uh, see if there's one or two? I, I can't see the audience at all, but does anyone I have a question for Maureen? Ola, would you, I, I, can't see any, I can't see anybody with the lights, so is there anyone with a hand up? But, um, yes, yes uh, my question. I would love to know what uh, relationship to improvisation you have mm. in your creative process and what it means for your improvisation in music, art and life. Mm. Improvisation, uh, you know, at least this is the, this is the way I feel. When I sing, I, I, I end up in a state of mind where everything's I wouldn't say, the things around me, they exist, but not really. It's like, y y there's a certain focus that goes in where it's, and some call it trance, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I'm there, that's when the improvisation comes. You know, when you just create, there's no longer, and no, no rules. And there shouldn't be rules when you create music. That's the way it's always been, you know? Um, so, so. I love improvisation because that, that's when I'm actually creating. That's when I'm doing what I love and what I think I do best. So it's really important. Everybody has it, no matter what you do. If you play the guitar or if you paint a painting or if any type of uh, creation or creators, that state of mind is actually when, when, you, when you create. It's freedom. Excellent. Mm. Thank you for the question. Earlier you talked about um, Satie as one of the three names you wanted to mention that you mm. brought with you from your childhood. Uh, if you look at um, classical music in general, mm. old or contemporary, uh, does it speak to you? Does it inspire you? Does it help you in any way? Very much. Very, very much. You see, I prefer music without vocals. I'm very picky with vocals, to be honest. And with classical music, it's, it's uh, yeah, it inspires me very, very, very much. And as a child, I used to listen to a lot of classical music, even though I didn't know the names of, of the composers, I still listened. Yeah, so yes, you were there, there you are. Then we need to wrap up. All right. Well, when you were in at Eurovision in Dusseldorf, uh, did you ever stop and assess your chances before the finale and think, mm, maybe I could win? Or did you think, mm, some other country's going to win? What, what was going on in your mind? Or did you think about it at all? You know what? To be honest, it was like the, oh, to me, it's, you shouldn't be competing when it comes to music because everybody has the right to create whatever they want, right? And, and everybody has their own opinion about everything, you know? So, so if I would have won or not, it wouldn't have mattered. But what would have mattered is, is the reaction, because I, I got a lot of reactions, a lot of positive reactions. To what I, to what we, I must say, we we created, okay. and and it just state meant meant it at that time. Like it's okay to do things differently. People appreciate things that are different and are from the heart, you know. And uh, to me, that was 
what was the most important thing. It actually was. I think the other guys were more happy than I was when we won. <laughs> I was mostly happy because of, of the meetings that I got and the reaction I got from the, from, from the audience because it was a really strong one. And, I and as you were sitting in the green room after your performance and the scores were coming in and you were getting 12s and 12s and 12s, hmm. What was going on in your mind at that moment? I tried to count. I tried, I like, 12, uh, where, where are we now, guys? Uh, are we? Uh, no, but I, I, was, I was actually most happy because uh, it, it's, it's, it's very symbolic, you know? Uh, and we all can use that. Having somebody come and do something that they believe in, that it actually works. And, and, and we need to know that. That as long as we believe in what, we, what we're doing, it will work. It will work. It's all about your own energy, you know. And I, I, and I fought for so long, and that was, it was symbolic, and it was important to me, and I hope it's going to help a lot of other people. Well, you deserve to have that moment, that triumph, and everything Thank that you. follows. So, thanks. It was great to Thank sit down you. with you and talk hug? to you. <laughs> Can I have <laughs> a sure, hug? Sure, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Great interview. Thank you. I see you in the show. Thanks. Thank you.